Hi there. This video demonstrates a proof of concept disc that boots custom code by circumventing the built-in security of the Bondi Pippin video game console designed by Apple Computer. We'll start off by showing expected behavior when we take a disc originally signed by Apple and attempt to boot this Pippin at World console. We'll then attempt the same thing with an unsigned disc of an unreleased Pippin title. Finally, we'll take a copy of that same disc, only this time signed using the utility I wrote, and observe that it satisfies the Pippin's authentication checks, allowing us to boot the console. We'll use the Macintosh on Pippin disc, otherwise known as the Tucson disc, from September 1998 as an example of how the Pippin normally boots a CD-ROM signed by Apple. I'm choosing the Tucson disc first because it's an original signed disc contemporary with the Pippin, but also because, as I'll show in a bit, it contains a utility that confirms we're using a ROM not from a dev or testing unit, but from a retail system intended for consumers. Consumer ROMs verify the contents of a CD every boot using the digested contents of the disc, signed by Apple using the private RSA signing key. So let's give it a shot. Doing the check. Takes a few seconds. All right, awesome. So since we made it past the Pippin logo, we passed the authentication check and now we're booting. Okay, and we are going to go ahead and open this up and open up this control panel hill card here called Mac Envy. Now Mac Envy is gonna tell us a very vital piece of information right there. The ROM checksum, 3E10E14C. And as you can see, checksum reported there is the same as the ROM checksum for ROM version 1.2, used in Pippin at World Systems shown in the US. Okay, so now that we've seen how a Pippin boots sign media, let's take a look at how it handles an unsigned disk. Now what I've got here is an unsigned boot CD that I made according to Apple's official instructions as best I could using the version of Roxotos that I have, version 5. Now I put Pippin OS 7.5.2 on this disk, which I confirmed with a fellow Pippin enthusiast to boot a Pippin system with ROM version 1.3. Now this is because ROM 1.3 doesn't do the security check on startup, but unfortunately Pippins built with ROM 1.3 are exceedingly rare, more so than the black Pippin at world that I have. I personally only know of one person with a 1.3 Pippin, and it was the person that tested this disc for me. So this disc itself is actually kind of getting old. I think I burned this seven or eight years ago, and it's starting to yellow a bit. But uh, I was able to make an image of it on my Power Mac, so I know it still works. So let's try it in the Pippin and see what happens. There we go. In the check. Ah, aha. Yeah, just as I expected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's because this disc is unsigned. So the Pippin security check takes a look at it, and since it doesn't match, it doesn't have an authentication file, uh, the Pippin just refuses to boot it, and so naturally it just spits it out. What we're looking at here is on the left, we've got the original unsigned version we saw previously, and then on the right, there's the new signed version, which I made using my utility. Now the one on the right, if you notice, the only difference is that we've got a Pippin authentication file on this disk, whereas the unsigned version is lacking that file. Now that Pippin authentication file consists of a series of MD5 digests of the contents of the disk. Now when the Pippin boots, it's gonna check the values of those, and if it's formatted correctly and it has the right values, then it'll pass the security check, and then we can boot. Now also notice that the Pippin authentication file on the left contains a copyright notice by Apple. This is from the Tucson disk we saw earlier. Whereas the one on the right is the one that I made, which does not contain this copyright notice. I mean, it shouldn't, it's my file. Now the copyright notice is part of the message part of the authentication file, which is signed by RSA and verified at boot time. But the actual content of the copyright notice doesn't actually matter. In my case, I gave credit to myself for creating the file. Anyway, here we go.
And there we go. We've passed. So at this point, we're now booting custom code, unsigned by Apple, but instead signed using a utility that I wrote that I can run on my own hardware. So basically this unlocks the console for the first time after over 20 years and finally opens up the potential for homebrew Pippin apps and games without the need for a dev unit, ROM 1.3, or security dongle. So there you have it. I'm pretty excited for what comes next.